Let's talk pirates. Everybody loves the Pirates of the Caribbean or Pirates of the Caribbean, however you choose to say it. But today, we're talking the real Pirates of the Caribbean, or should I say, the Privateers of the Caribbean. Hi, I'm Kayan. This is my husband, Johnny, our daughter, Athena, and our dog dog, Titan. Together, we are the History Rats. As most of you know, we are located on the coast of Texas. And today is February the 17th of 2021. And if you are watching this anytime close to the present, you know that we are currently experiencing some abnormal winter storms. So it is very cold here in Flashes and we are coupled up inside a big blue, staying nice and warm. It has put a dent in some of our to-do list, but it is what it is. We history rats, we don't we don't appreciate the cold. There is a reason why we want to go to the tropical areas of the world, not the cold areas of the world. So, we are here with our propane heater a going. It's about 36 degrees outside. I think we got down to well below 20. I don't know what exactly we got to, but we did get below 20. Uh, but we are a nice, roasty 75 degrees here in Big Blue. Got that taken care of. So, you can probably hear our halyard banging in the wind. Something you have to grow accustomed to on a sailboat. We lost dock power at about 2 o'clock Monday morning. Uh, we got it back sometime around 5 this morning, which today is Wednesday, so a little more than 48 hours. But thankfully, because we have been preparing Big Blue to go on our grand trip of our dreams, and explore the world, Johnny has been making preparations for Big Blue to be self-contained and to be able to support herself off the grid. So in December, uh, we got Athena Christmas presents, of course, but Johnny and I exchanged Boatmas presents. We invested in some things that would make life easier here on Big Blue, like a refrigerator and our handy dandy solar panels, which we got to test out over the course of this ice storm. And I'm glad to report, knock on wood, they work and they work pretty well. So there's that. But unfortunately, because of the cold, and the snow, as I was saying, because of the wind and the rain and the sleet and the snow and the cold and the fact that this history rat is not a penguin, we don't have very much outside dock time to show you this week. And I know that last week I did story time with the history rats, the LaSalle adventure, but because of our beautiful Texas weather, this week I'm going to bring you another story time with the history rats. I put up a poll on dark history with the history rats on Facebook asking if you would rather hear about Captain Morgan or Black Sam Bellin. Well, it was about tied. So, because here on Big Blue we 
fly the Brethren of the Coast flag, which happens to be Captain Morgan's flag. We drink Captain Morgan rum, and we're contemplating naming our boat because we will eventually rename Big Blue in a proper ceremony with the proper sacrifice to the sea god, so we don't have any issues there. We are contemplating naming our boat the Satisfaction after Henry Morgan's Satisfaction. So, this week I'm going to present to you the man, the myth, the guy on the front of the rum bottle, Sir Henry Morgan. Check it out. Before I get into this week's story time with the history rats, let me just take a minute, one tiny minute to tell you, Dr. Pepper rocks my socks. It really is the 23 flavors that I love almost the most. The only thing I love more than Dr. Pepper is coffee. And that's just because you can't put the coffee flavor. That's the only, that's the only flavor it's missing. Dr. Pepper. Delicious. They're still not a sponsor, but it's worth a shot, right? So, today we're going to talk about Captain Henry Morgan. The man, the myth, the guy on the rum bottle. We history brats have a bit of a soft spot for this Welsh privateer, plantation owner, and later Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica, who became wealthy by raiding Spanish settlements and shipping from his base in Port Royal. Yeah, that's right, I said Port Royal. Insert picture here. Because it's not just a place in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. We'll get to that later. Henry was born on the 24th day of January, in the year 1635, in a place in Welsh, Wales, that I will put down here, but I'm not going to try to pronounce it. We know that his father was Robert, who was a farmer, and that he had a younger sister named Catherine, but there isn't very much other information written about his childhood other than he came from Wales and that he was an indentured servant at some point which led him to going to Jamaica. History pretty much picks Henry back up in the 1650s which is when at some point he went to Jamaica as a indentured servant. Uh, they don't really specify what year there were two different expeditions made by the English that they believed that he was involved in, but they don't actually know for sure. So, England set out to capture the Spanish colonies on the island of Jamaica in 1655. This is when Jamaica went from being a Spanish colony to a English colony, but there were always back and forth in between Spain and England. There have been back and forth between Spain and England in history, all the way back to the Tudor dynasty. Uh, if you are into that kind of thing, there could be something about Elizabeth coming up in the future if you tell me that you want to hear that, because I happen to be a Tudor aficionado. I, li I like the Tudor. So, anyway, there was also an expedition against Cuba by England in 1662. And those are the two they believe that Henry was involved in those two expeditions, but they don't actually know that he was involved in those two expeditions. Uh, in 1664, so two years after the expedition on Cuba, Henry's uncle, Sir Edward Morgan, was made deputy governor of Jamaica. The next year, Henry would marry the governor's 17-year-old daughter, Elizabeth Morgan. Now, coincidentally, yes, this does strike us similar to the Pirates of the Caribbean. Will Turner, 
was an indentured servant to a blacksmith who fell in love with the governor's daughter named Elizabeth. And I do believe that the actress who played Elizabeth Swan was actually like 17 at the filming of the first Pirates of the Caribbean. So it even works out age-wise. So let's talk about the fact that her name was Elizabeth Morgan before she married Henry Morgan because her father, Sir Edward Morgan, was the one and the same Sir Edward Morgan who was Henry Morgan's uncle, the Lieutenant Governor. Henry married his 17-year-old cousin. That, that is something that Disney cut out of their version of the Pirates of the Caribbean. But this was a thing in that day. I, technically, there's some people who would say it's still a thing. But this was very much a tradition back in this era, the 16th century, 17th century. It's very, um, the noble families would a lot of the time marry into each other because they thought that it was like a purebred thing. It, um, not my kink, but I guess everybody got one. So, that, it happens. Young, sweet Elizabeth, the governor's daughter, was born sometime during the year of 1648 in Germany. Again, I will magically put the name of this German town right here, but I'm not going to try to say it. She was born in Germany, though. Uh, her mother, Anna Petronella von Polnitz. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Died the same year that her father became governor. That was also the year before the couple had a traditional ceremony in Wales in the town of Glamorgan which does actually involve their last name, Morgan, Glam Morgan. And yes, there is a thing. The English have a very strong, your last name usually defines what your ancestors did if you come from European descent. Uh, like our friend Pittman, his people dug ditches, pits. It's a thing, if your last name is Fuller, your people were either laundresses or they made clothes. So, there. Now you now you know. Uh, they had their wedding just before the Second Anglo-Dutch War broke out in Jamaica. This not only cut the honeymoon short, it kind of ruined young Elizabeth's life. Uh, Henry was named second in command over the buccaneers who operated against the Dutch colonies while he, while his uncle and now father-in-law died of a heart attack during one of the many raids on the Dutch. Now remember, I told you that Elizabeth's mother died the same year that her father became governor, the year before she and Henry got married. So in a two year span, she lost her mother her father become governor. She married her cousin. Her husband left for a war, and her father died in a two year span. That's that's not that that's not great luck, really. It's it's not. Um. In oh, and let's talk about the use of the word buccaneer. A buccaneer is actually not technically. A pirate, a buccaneer, is technically someone who makes jerky on a wooden spigot over the fire. It comes from the word bucania. Now you know. And what is the difference between a pirate and a privateer? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you. A privateer has 
papers proving that he actually has, he or she, has the backing of the government, in most times a monarchy. Privateers have been hired in English history, Scottish history, American history, because I'd like to point out, in the War of 1812, the Battle of New Orleans, Andrew Jackson actually enlisted the help of Jean Lafitte and his pirate clan. Now you know. In 1668, Henry was promoted to commander of the buccaneers. He quickly captured Port Porto Prince Principe, Cuba. He stormed and sacked the well-fortified city of Portobello on the Isthmus, Isthmus of Panama. The following year, Henry and his men made successful raids on wealthy Spanish settlements around Lake Marquedo on the coast of Venezuela. With the backing of the Jamaican governor, along with 36 English ships and nearly 2,000 buccaneers under his command, Henry set out to capture Panama, one of the chief cities of Spain's American Empire in August of 1670. <coughs> they crossed the Isthmus. If I'm not saying that word correctly, I'm sorry. I am working on my Spanish, but we'll get there. The Isthmus of Panama, defeating a large Spanish force, and entered the city of Panama on January 18, 1671. The city would later burn to the ground as his men pillaged and plundered. Um, there are a lot of mixed feelings on Sir Henry Morgan and his raid on Panama and the Spanish colonies in general. Uh, if you watch Josh Gates on Expeditions Unknown, he actually goes through and covers Henry's expedition to Panama, and uh, it covers some of the good sides and the bad sides, but I'd like to point out that when you're talking about war, it's, it's, it never ends good. It, it doesn't. There's going to be good stories and bad stories. It, it happens. That's just history. I digress. Although Henry had English backing when he set out on his expedition for Panama, by the time he actually took the city, there had been a peace treaty signed between England and Spain. So the English had to arrest him because what he did was bad. You're basically breaking a peace treaty. That's that's not good. But Back in the 17th century, communications wasn't like it is today. They didn't have cell phones. So it wasn't like they could just pick up the phone and be like, Hey, Henry, come back. We're no longer at war with that culture and people. No, they couldn't. But I'd also like to point out that, no offense to the Spanish in my audience, but historically... Spain has been kind of um, a juggernaut when it comes to crushing other people, people's cultures. They took out a lot of the Aztecs and the Mayans that were in Mexico before the Spaniards got to Mexico. So, anyway, I digress. Uh, on April of 1672... Henry was transported to England as a prisoner, and he was held there for two years. But, as I said earlier, Spain and England have always had a uh, love-hate relationship. Um, it, Henry VIII was married to a Spanish princess. 
his daughter Mary the first was married to the King of Spain uh, her half sister Elizabeth the first was a uh, thorn in the side of Spain so it's just it went back and forth and um, by 1674 after Henry had been in jail for two years uh, the relationship between England and Spain went again and at 39 years old Henry was not only knighted but he was made deputy governor of Jamaica and sent back to his base in Port Royal now if you ask Miss Google you'll come up with contradicting information about who knighted Henry uh, for example if you look up look it up on Wikipedia which I have said before I do not rely on Wikipedia because it is very often incorrect but along with Wikipedia Mr. Nossbaum.com which is one of the places where I got my information uh, the article on both says that Henry was knighted by the Queen of England but based on my research along with uh, Ha. Sir Henry Welsh no Sir Henry Morgan Welsh Buccaneer on Britannica.com along with my own research and the fact that I know what year he was knighted Charles II would have been King of Scotland England and Ireland because at that point in time the entire reign of Tudors that is when it became the United Kingdom, England, Ireland, and Scotland. That's another story time with the history rats. Uh, if it were the Queen of England, it would have been either Elizabeth I, Mary, or Victoria. The, based on the fact that it is in the year 1674 it would have to be Charles II which was the third king in the Stuart dynasty that ruled over England Ireland and Scotland back in Jamaica Henry had already been a rather successful planter on top of his privateer booty and when he was given the position of governor, it kind of, he was governor by day and miscreant at night. Uh, the same people that he was, you know, smacking on the wrist in the daytime, he was helping to make their plundering ambitions happen. Uh, his base in Port Royal was not exactly what you see in the movie Pirates of the Caribbean or any of the movies for that matter uh, it was more like Tortuga is portrayed in the franchise actually there was drinking and saloons with women of the night and debauchery gambling it was all going on and Henry made a success for himself out of that as well as his farm life which was apparently pretty good too uh, Henry died on August 25th 1688 at the age of 53 when he died, he died in peace. He died in his sleep. Uh, he died of old age. It, it happened. Uh, but he is the only pirate that I have ever found actual documentation about that he died peacefully and rather successfully, I might add. 
uh, he was suspended from his position of being governor in 1683. So he did go five years not being governor, but he still had his plantation and he had his wife and he basically lived happily ever after. So, just goes to show that all pirate life doesn't end in sorrow and tragedy. Although, can't even say that for all explorers that weren't privateers or pirates or buccaneers or anything else that has turned into a negative coin. I'm not saying that all of them were good. Yeah, there were bad guys, but there were good guys too. Not completely good. They weren't None of them were good. There's a bad apple in every bunch. I'm just saying, we all have the possibility of being good or bad. You make up your own mind. Four years after Henry died, the town of Port Royal, Jamaica, was actually devastated by an earthquake. Now, they had a few earthquakes before that, but in the 1692 earthquake there, it was decimated. What is cool about this once busy center of British West Indies, an infamous place for its general debauchery, and that's, I'm, that's a quote, you can actually go and dive Port Royal right now. That is actually, it's one of the many, many places that I have on my tropical to-do list. When we set out, we don't intend on going to a lot of tourist destinations because we're not, we, we don't like big crowds. It's just, it's, it's not our thing. By the way, talk to Pepper. But there are some things that are touristy-ish but not really touristy, then I do want to check out. And Port Royal is one of them. We have watched so many really awesome documentaries where they actually go down and you can see some of the structures that are still standing. I mean, it's, it's like a modern day Atlantis. It's, it's freaking amazing. But that pretty much wraps up the life of Sir Henry Morgan. The man, the myth, the guy on the rum bottle. And now you know. And I'm going to leave you with a clip of the Brethren of the Coast flag. So, make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next week be good to each other stay warm